This week we look at smart objects in Photoshop. Adorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -one, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. Well, let's dive right in and look at our question from Jennifer. I use Camera Raw when editing images in Photoshop. However, I've noticed that I can only access the raw menu in the very beginning when I first open my image. Is there a way to go back to this menu later on? Well, Jennifer, absolutely you can go back to that menu later on and it all depends on how you open your raw image. And so what we're going to talk about today is something called smart objects. And the neat thing about smart objects is not only do they allow you to go back to that raw menu and make adjustments, they also allow you to do something called non-destructive editing. And this applies not only to Photoshop files and raw files, but also vector files like Illustrator files, things like that that you pull into Photoshop to do some advanced editing. So let's take a closer look at the wonder of smart objects in Photoshop. Okay, let me show you the setup that I have here. I have a folder called smart objects and inside that folder I have six pictures. One uh, is actually an Adobe Illustrator file, a vector image, and then I have a couple of JPEG images and the rest are raw files. So let's jump right in by opening a raw file in normal Adobe raw. So what I'll do is I'll just drag that onto Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop 5. Uh, Photoshop CS5 and this is camera raw 6.4.1 and this is the uh, dialogue that we're all used to I can go in here and do things like uh, changing my color temperature and you know doing all the stuff I need to do so once I have this in what I'll do is normally you would go down here and you click open image what that's going to do is it's going to apply all of the stuff that you've done to your image and open it as a layer in Photoshop so I'll do that and here it is. Here's our layer. It's a background layer. Now normally you want to make sure that you do non-destructive editing. In other words, you want to edit your file in a way that you can always come back and repair anything that maybe you've edited a little bit too much. Now that's the reason I think that you probably want to go back into Adobe Camera Raw to make some of those adjustments. And so let me show you what happens when you open this as a smart object because not only are you going to be able to go back into Adobe Camera Raw to make adjustments, but you're going to get an extra level of protection. In fact, to illustrate that, what I'm going to do is this background layer here. I'm going to double click that and I'm going to hit OK just to unlock it. And what I want to show you is what happens when you resize an image in Photoshop. So this is just a raster image. It's made up of pixels and it is a normal layer. So I'm going to hit the smart, uh, the transform tool and I'm going to go down here and shrink it into a little teeny window on the left hand side and I'll hit OK and then I'm going to stretch it out like this and then I'll hit return and then I'm going to try to restore this to its original file size and you can see that when I do that it looks horrible because when I shrank it, it threw away all the pixel information. And so the more I edit this, the more I move it around and resize it, the worse it's going to become. And so you can see this is just getting to be really, really nasty. And so let me show you what happens when we use this as an actual smart object. So I'm going to close this. And I'm not going to save it. I don't want to do that. I'm going to zip back over here to my finder window and then here is my camera raw file. Now what I can do here is I can slide this over again, drop it onto Photoshop. So I'll drop this over here and when I do that, here's my file again. Now open image, if I hit the shift key on my keyboard, it will say open object. Now that's a big difference. So shift, open object. Now when I open this as an object, notice over here on my layer it's no longer locked. I have this little icon down there. That icon is saying that this is now a smart object and it allows me to do all kinds of things. The first, if I want to go in there and edit that and I can double click it on the layer and look, there it is. There is my uh, Adobe Camera Raw dialog and now I can change the color temperature. I can do all the stuff that I uh, want to do in there. Hit OK. It updates the smart object. I can do that as many times as I want. In fact, I can go in here and I can hit the Option button or Alt on a PC and click Reset to take that right back to the original settings. So I can do all kinds of stuff here. I'm going to really warm this up so you get an idea of the settings that I'm getting. Now, here's another thing. If I hit Control T for Transform, I'll do exactly what I did before. I'm going to shrink this down and then I'm going to hit Control T for Transform. I'm going to stretch it out. I'm going to hit Return to apply that. And then I'm going to stretch this back out again and look. 
it looks just like it did before. In fact, if I go full size, you can see that it is totally pristine. There is no damage to this image whatsoever because that smart object, what it does is it basically builds a protective layer, uh, a container, it's probably a better way to put it, a protective container to put my uh, document inside. And so I can stretch it and do all kinds of stuff and I'm not gonna throw away any pixel data at all, ever. All right, well, let's keep going because there's some other advantages of using uh, smart objects. And so the first is that you can open a JPEG file as a smart object and even as an Adobe RAW file. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open Bridge. When I open Bridge, that is going to go right into this smart objects folder because I already navigated there. I'm going to go to my JPEG file and right click that. And I'm going to say open in camera RAW. Now when it opens up in camera raw, that looks cool and I can do all of my different adjustments. But what I'm gonna do is again, shift open object. Now I have a JPEG image and I can double click on that and go in here and make changes just like in Adobe camera raw because this is Adobe camera raw and hit okay. I can double click, go in and make changes again. Now notice this doesn't have actual color temperature. It has just plus and minus, but that's because it's a JPEG image. Now one of the big advantages to using Camera Raw instead of just opening it as a JPEG image, one, you get the protection of scaling up and down and preserving all those pixels, but there's some other things that you can do as well. For example, let's say that I wanted to change the levels. And so I go in here and say levels, change. Well, I have no indication as to where I'm losing detail in my shadows or where I'm losing detail in my highlights. I don't know where that's happening. So instead, what I can do, let me go back here to my layers. I'm gonna get rid of that levels. I'm just gonna double click to go back into Camera Raw. Now I have these little warnings that I can show. So shadow clipping warning, I can turn that on and I can turn on the other side, which is the highlight clipping warning. So now if I'm changing things, as I'm going down here, I can start to see where I'm losing things. So up here, everything turns red, where I'm losing detail in the highlights. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go into the blacks. Now I can start seeing everything turns blue where I'm losing detail in the shadows. And so that is another benefit to using this. And it's a much better way to change your exposure and shadows and highlights, because you really can go down here and uh, use all of your curves and your parametric adjustments. And you can always go back and change those by double clicking and coming back into Camera Raw. And it's just another non-destructive editing technique. Well, let's look at something else that's really important. And that is the difference between a copy and a clone. Now I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to get rid of this guy right fast. In fact, I'm gonna close this whole thing out. I don't wanna save it. All right, I'm gonna go back over to my finder here and I'm gonna open up my camera raw file and I'm just gonna open it up just like that. Open it up as an object and it pops it in on in my uh, Photoshop application. And now let's look at the difference between a copy and a clone. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to drag this to a new layer and we're basically, we're cloning this. Now, let me show you exactly what I mean. I'm gonna free transform this and I'm gonna shrink this to about halfway. Say, okay, that's the bottom layer. I'm gonna free transform the top layer here, about like that, and I'll say, okay. Now, because these are clones, if I double click and go into Camera Raw on either one of them, if I change this color temperature to be really, uh, really, really hot like that, I'll click that, both of them are going to be updated. If I go to the top one, I'll double click that. I'm gonna fix this color temp really quickly. I'm gonna go in here, I'm going to uh, do a little crop, hit OK, bam, both of those are going to be updated because they are actually uh, cloned. So if you adjust one, you're adjusting the other. Now I undid some of that stuff. And what I wanna show you uh, is something that is very different. So uh, what I'll do here is I'll take this uh, top layer here and I'm going to get rid of it. Now this bottom layer here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into layer and I'm going to go to smart object and then I'll go to new smart object via copy. What I'm saying is copy this and make it a new smart object. So that's going to disconnect these smart objects. And so it's right on top of the other one. So if I take that, sorry, if I take that and I move it over, 
I will double click on that. I'll zip right into Camera Raw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this here. I'm going to make it black and white. And then I'll make it something really dramatic so you can tell that there's something different going on here. When it updates, it just updates this one on the right, not the one on the left. And that is a significant difference. Now, what I also want to do here, though, is show you something else that's available to you with smart objects that is not available to you um, if you don't use smart objects, specifically how groups function. And uh, let me get into that really fast. So I'm going to fix what I've done here because this is just not a very good uh, representation of this photo. It sort of drives me bonkers. So I'm going to fix the exposure. Make that go back. There we go. So I've got something a little bit better than that. And uh, here we go. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this uh, layer right here. I'm going to put it on the, the bottom. I'm going to increase the size of this. So it's about like that. Make sure I hit Shift to restrain the proportions. I'm going to take this top layer. And it doesn't really matter what I'm doing. I'm just sort of uh, putting these um, on top of each other and making an arrangement here. Now I've got this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these. I'm going to drag them into a group. So there we go. There's my group. I'm going to take that group. I'm going to convert that to a smart object. So before I do that, I'm going to show you how I did it. On the Layers panel right here, there's this drop down. And I went down here to Convert to Smart Object. I'm clicking on that. Now look, that has a little smart object on there. Now the cool thing about that is now my effects are available to me. So I can add drop shadows and bevel and bevels and boss and inner glow and outer glow. All that stuff is available to me. If I undo that, so this is just a group, look, there is that is not available to me. I can't use those effects. So by taking that and saying convert to smart object, now I have all those effects. Now watch this. I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna create a drop shadow, and I'm just gonna put that on the entire thing. So what we'll do is we'll make the opacity. 100%. We'll make the distance really big. I'll make the size of this pretty massive here. So there we go. Now we have this big ugly drop shadow. And I'll hit OK. That'll really help you see that. I'm going to make a, a bottom layer here that is totally white. So now you can see we have this drop shadow. Now I'm going to show you something that's really important that is uh, really will impact the way you work. Let's say I want to change now this group. I've got these smart objects inside of that. If I want to change those, I can double click on the group. I'm going to get a warning that says, hey, after you save this, after you do editing, make sure you click Save to commit the changes. I'll explain that in a second. So here we are. We have our smart object. And when I open that up, notice that it's opened up as a separate file. So that's a file that's embedded into the master file. And when I open up this group, check it out. Here are my smart objects inside that group. I can double click on those, get right back into my camera raw, make adjustments if necessary, do anything I need to do. So it's totally non-destructive. That's going to update these. Now, here's something that's really uh, amazing, actually. So I'm going to go in here, and what I'll do is I'm going to shrink this a little bit. I'm just going to uh, change the magnification so I can see everything. I'm going to take this top um, picture right here, and I'm going to move it over. When I do, you can see that part of it is invisible. It's over here. And what I can do, if I want to see all of that, I can go up here to Image. And I can say Reveal All and Whammo, just like that. Basically, the canvas size expands. We have a transparent area, and we can see all of this stuff. Now, to update the, the big file, see this hasn't been updated yet. What I need to do is close this. When I close it, it's going to ask me if I want to save it. When I save it, it's going to update this smart object, that container that holds this group. So I'll say Save. Now watch what happens. All of this is updated, even the effects that I applied to that group. And so you have a lot of power by converting things to smart objects. Well, thanks so much for watching today. I hope you learned a little bit about smart objects and why I love using them when I'm editing in Photoshop. Well, if you're like Jennifer and you have a question about photography or post-production or photography gear, you can send those questions to me at askmark at adorama.com and we might just use it on an upcoming episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. Now, don't forget to subscribe to our videos so you don't miss a single episode. And you can always go to the Adorama Learning Center to see all kinds of videos and tutorials about photography and photography gear. Well, thanks again for joining me this week, and I'll see you again next time.
This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Let's, you know what, I should do that after I do the question. Yeah. Digital Photography One-on-One -on -one is written and produced by Snap Factory. For more information about our workshops, visit snapfactory.com. <laughs>